everybody this is Shelia from the Sunshine Stitchers. EJ is vacationing with her family. Gary is at StitchCon Weekend B enjoying himself I am sure. So I thought I would take the opportunity this week to give you a small tour of my stitching salon. It's small because it's one room so hey you know there's not a lot to begin with. And I would also show you some of the finishes and fully finished objects I have around the house. So this will be a multi-part video. I hope you enjoy it and hang in there with me uh, for as long as you can. Um, so the order of this video, the regular kind of content that you see from us every week in terms of comments, whips, will be at the end of this video. I'm doing this by myself, so I'm doing it in small chunks to help me kind of manage the process. So I uh, hope you enjoy it, and so let's carry on. As I mentioned before, one of the hallmarks, I believe, of my stitching salon is my floss wall. This is a view of the entire wall that has the Victorian model samplers, organized by color, variegated threads, which are uh, alphabetically organized. Uh, then you'll see some silks. That is not my full silk collection. I pulled, uh, I, I organized my silks by color and I pulled bags of silks for a big project that I'm going to be working on or starting before the end of the year. Uh, you can see that I have a nice little selection of hoops uh, and as I move up, there's my sulky thread collections. Uh, there's a gift from one of, a couple of gifts from a couple of our viewers uh, that I just love so much that I, I hung them for display. Can't bring myself to use them. They're so pretty. Um, as I turn slightly here uh, in the room, I'm not standing in one spot. So again, it gives you a size. We're talking 10 by 12, possibly. This particular hutch here, I had built before I moved to Florida for my house in Maryland. Uh, it, as you can see, has a little sewing. That's my mess there that you'll see later. Um, that actually will house the sewing machine if it's turned sideways. This um, hutch here houses a DMC a zero through 899. You can see some kits that I've had for many, many years, as well as a lot of various different kind of objects, uh, including um, bins of um, scissors and cutters, and I'm a scissor collector, what can I say? In this area, this partly is set up like this to keep Joe Robinette out of it, um, but those are just, that's junk, and another sewing machine tucked back in there. And then these drawers are grind guards and other kind of miscellaneous things. As I slowly turn around, uh, you will now start to see the closet. <laughs> uh, in the closet, you see um, bags of DMC, 900 to, I guess, 38.99. My Sullivan's Threads collections, um, Caloris, any other thing. And those are my bins of charts that I've um, collected. So that's my chart stash, pretty much organized by topic. Some might be by a designer. You can see Rosewood Manor there in front. And you can also see where I found my Blackbird book. <laughs> it was actually sitting right there. I just kept looking right by it. What can I say? age. Th this bin uh, contains fabric and those drawers are full. I organize by size. Uh, the 16 is with the 32. The 18 is with the 36 count. This is my tote bag. You can see that it contains uh, uh, project bags. Those are projects 
that are either on roller frames or rolla frames or their large um, large projects like letters from mom carefully turning you around <laughs> that's a dress form that i actually keep near the window i figure if anybody comes by and wants to look in <laughs> they'll see a dress form there maybe it'll scare them uh, this is an ikea and i don't remember the name an ikea uh, two ikea bookshelves side by side cubbies where you can see i obviously store a bunch of stuff there are um and a lot of the items that you're going to see now actually sit on in some of these cubby spaces in the corner here is my collection of projects the top one and a half cubbies in that corner are fully kitted projects uh, beginning with that middle there and then moving down are all whips that's my stash of project bags waiting for projects to go and that middle shelf there is actually my uh, threads my skin tone collections of which I have um, silk and a variety of threads, cotton, silk from different makers. I keep all my skin tones separate. So when I'm looking for a skin tone color, I know exactly where to find it. So that is basically the stitching salon. I, I love it. Um, I spent a lot of time here uh, and enjoy being here very much. So that was my tour of my stitching salon. Hope you enjoyed it. I made no effort to clean it up, straighten it up, uh, because why bother? It's what it is. Uh, and many, you all know, you identify with it. There's stuff, my stuff, we got stuff. Uh, so what I do, thought I would do right now is start to show you some of the finished items that actually sit in this room on the cubbies that I just showed you. I will tell you right now, several of these are, are several years old. I don't know, I may not remember um, designers. I am not gonna make any effort to tell you anything about fabric or thread, unless there was something um, that particularly stands out about it or it's a recently finished project. And uh, so I remember. I'm gonna start with something that I remember. <laughs> I'm gonna start with my uh, The Sampler Book by Erica Michaels. Many of you are familiar with this. You uh, very patiently uh, watched me uh, stitch this over more than, more than a year. Um, I loved this project as many, again, I love specialty stitches. I like the challenge of them, the beauty, the intricacy of them. I, I love a specialty stitch. Uh, and so this is the sampler book. She just recently released this in market, for market this year. Uh, you'll notice that my AB is bigger than the rest of them because uh, I, misread and counted the instructions. Didn't realize it until I got to B and uh, C and D and realized it was much smaller. So after that, I made a template that I very, very carefully looked at and followed for all the rest of the pages to make sure I didn't make that mistake again. Clearly, this was not going to be a redo. So the nice thing is that it sort of sits, kind of covers the edges a little bit. So, hey, we make it work. Uh, as I mentioned, Erica Michaels re-released this this year. Uh, these are fabrics, 32 count fabrics that were in my stash. The um, threads are primarily Victorian model sampler threads, except that the names of each specialty stitch are a silks for you and like I said I don't remember what the number is but this is all of the names are the same uh, silks for you um, silk as you go across regardless of what colors I used uh, in the pieces 
and this is the back. Uh, yeah, so I finished it in 2021. Yay! <laughs> uh, and I, uh, I finished it uh, myself. So for those, I've seen these at on um, brag tables at retreats where people have done magnificent jobs of finishing, a uh, much better job than I did, but I'm very proud of this. I'm very proud of this. This is a, um, a little, you've seen a lot of these patterns. Uh, this is just folded and placed in here. I was gonna go back and lace it and uh, finish it nicely, but I, I didn't. And this is at least three or four years old now. So I guess this is the way it is. This is a piece that was finished uh, in memory of a very special stitchy friend who passed away. Uh, this is in remembrance of, of my stitchy friend, Tilly. This is a By the Bay, uh, the uh, designer By the Bay, very nicely. Several of us stitched By the Bay pieces in remembrance of Tilly. I contacted the designer to let her know she saw an uptick in sales from South Florida. This is why. And she actually sent us this uh, as, as a um, kind of partner piece to go along with it. And this says, when this you see, remember me. And I said, your friend, and I put in her name down here. I finished this and as you can see it's a, <laughs> it's a little off. My, finish, my finishing skills are becoming legendary. I own it. Uh, yeah, I didn't quite get it quite right, but you know, every time I see it, I think of Tilly and that's what's important. This is a needle roll that I finished in a class with Hands-On Design and Summer House Stitch Works, Needlework Galleria 2019. This is the first time I've ever attempted anything like this. Uh, and as you can see, it's actually finished very uh, nicely. Um, we The pre preliminary stitching was for the needle roll itself. And we did the finishing in the class. So uh, I, this is, I'm very proud of this. This is very tightly packed. Um, I probably, I almost earned the uh, worst student uh, award for that particular class because in the filling of this and sewing the ends together, I actually started sewing both the ends together before I filled it. So I had to pull it apart, stuff it, and then reseal one end. I was so proud too until all of a sudden I realized it's a little flat. Oh well. Like I said, finishing, I don't care, even if I'm in a class, finishing. This is a piece that I actually originally bought as a travel piece. Then I decided that maybe it's not the thing to sit and stitch on in airports. It was a kit, you know, what can I say? It fits. It sits here. So every now and then I have to look at it and take deep breaths. Here's another um, kit that I, I finished. This was a special release by Hands-On Design. Uh, again, I don't remember when. It's called Dream of the Sea. The kit uh, was done in partnership with one of the cross-stitch stores, and I don't remember which one. Um, but the kit came with everything that you will see here. Uh, so here is the stitching for the scissor holder and came with this pair of scissors. It had uh, a little uh, box that we stitched and I did all the finishing on this. I'm, yay! Occasionally I do get it right. <laughs> the pens came in the kit. Very cute. I dream of the sea. Uh, this is a um, holder for a, a three inch gauge. The fabric came with it. 
And this is um, the tray. The metal tray came with it. And this sits on in the on one of in one of the cubbies here. I keep it all together, uh, and it manages to actually stay together. Let me put this back here. A class piece that I finished. 2021. This was to be an in-person class with Beth Seal of Summer House Stitch Works, and um, this is called. I don't remember what this is called. Um, we finished all the stitching before the class and the class focused on the finishing. So this is the first time I ever worked with anything um, that was like felt. And then we, you know, just did interesting little decorative stitches. Um, it, it, she gave us the, uh, all the felt, um, some of the buttons are, were mine. Uh, some of the button attachment techniques I used from another class that I took for a project that's not finished. And this is the inside. We covered the little holders here and this is the floss that was used, the remainder of the floss that was used in the project. And we learned how to do that. So, and the back, it's my name and the date. That's the reason why I know what the date is. <laughs> uh, you will notice as this video goes along, I don't date anything and I rarely, rarely sign in stitching uh, with my initials. I did in the very beginning, but I stopped after a while. I, one of the things that I always wanted to do is to learn how to make Biscor new. One year, I don't remember, 2018 or 19, I devoted to learning how to do Biscor new. This is a Biscor new that was is, uh, from a French magazine. And, and I um, assembled it myself. And this is filled with... Um, walnut shells and it's it's tight these were originally uh, done for uh, ex uh, smallest exchanges for um, re retreats in 2020 and of course uh, that's why I still have them. and this is a Satsuma Street Southwest themed Biscor new again that was intended to for smalls exchange I finished it myself. I did uh, last year when we went to StitchCon for the Smalls Exchange. I did, I did three of them, and so I was finally able to use one of them in that Smalls Exchange. I was, I was very happy about that because you know, well, first finally I was at a retreat. Um, I had my Smalls, and I was very happy that it was my first Biscor new which I actually had put beads around it. It was very, you know, we, I revel in my small successes because they're hard to come by. <laughs> this one you saw earlier this year, relatively new finish, Traveling Stitcher. And uh, it's a little, little bag. This I purchased as a kit from... Well, it was part purchased in two parts. You purchased the chart and then the uh, little pouch and a needle book. Uh, it was sold separately. I bought these at Keepsakes when I went to StitchCon last year. And the only framed piece hanging in this room uh, is this piece, which was done in who knows when. This is a 1990s uh, finish. I put it in the frame myself. I knew not what I was doing. Uh, periodically, I have to adjust it because it's not secured. I think I'm going to take it apart and try to tape it in place to keep it from shifting. I believe this is a Linda Driscoll pull thread 
piece. Those of you who've been around for a while or may be familiar with Linda Driscoll. She used to issue these um, wonderful pieces that were all pulled and drawn thread. So this is drawn thread uh, where you actually remove threads and then you weave the remaining threads into patterns. This is an oldie. This is one of the rare pieces where she actually used color. Most of hers are a crew on a crew or white on white. So thank you for uh, at least looking at some of the finishes, fully finishes that I have in my stitching salon. I'm now going to show you the finishes that hang on a skirt hooks in the closet. Hold on. Okay, so I was getting ready to hang this back up and I realized that I showed it to you upside down. The little bird's nest should be upright. Huh? So yeah, so here's the Linda Driscoll piece right side up. I figured I needed to correct that. Before we leave the stitching salon, well, it's not like we're going anytime soon, trust me. I thought I would show you some of the pieces that hang in the closet. Uh, these are all on, whoops, piece of floss from yesterday. Uh, these are all on skirt hangers, uh, so I will show them to you. The first is a very special series for me. I haven't finished a series. I do plan to start the rest of them this year. These are Bent Creek Photo Booth pieces. These were stitched several years ago. I love these. They are so much fun. The charts came with the fabric and the buttons. Originally, I stitched them to give as gifts, but Karen Owen, the owner of the Cross Stitch Cupboard, convinced me that I needed to keep the set together. So here they, I still have them. My plan is to frame them and place them in different places around the house. So when people come over and as they move around, they will all of a sudden come across a really fun series that might bring a smile to their face. So that's a wonderful series, The Photo Booth by Bent Creek. I forget how many of them there are, but I think I have about five left to do. All right, so this is, where's, where's the, this is another hanger, here we go, of finished pieces, and I will go through these now. Lay this across my lap so I can uh, get to them easily. The first the one at the top of this particular hanger is If Pumpkins Could Fly, Hands on Design. I believe this was finished last year. This is the uh, piece that was released by Hands on Design last Christmas. Um, cookie cutters, stack of pastries, peppermint canes, uh, mixing bowl, just, just gorgeous little piece. This was part of a sal. She released this in multiple parts last December. Oh, looky, this one I actually kept my little card with so I can tell you exactly what it is. Uh, this is Halloween Town. Uh, uh, raised by Raise the Roof Design. 
uh, it was kitted with silks and chart, and it's on R and R Productions Winter Brew Thirty Six Count. It was started in two thousand nineteen, and I believe I finished it two thousand twenty one. Let me get this card off of here. There we go. And here is Halloween Town. Let me put this back on there so that I don't lose it. Whoops, I just dropped the pen. And now I've dropped the hanger. All righty. Okay. That was a little unwieldy. Hanger fell on floor. This was finished last, oh, was it this year? Uh, A sweet, a stitch for uh, Sweet Freedom by Lindy Stitches. I changed the, no, I didn't change the skin tone. It was the right skin tone. Yeah. This was, I bought this at StitchCon in 2019. She had just released it. And um, I really uh, acknowledged her for uh designing this piece. I know that some uh, white designers uh, kind of hesitate to use uh, skin tones, darker skin, skin tones in some of their designs, but you know, go for it. We represent all shades, all colors of brown, tan, dark, light, go for it. And this is, I'm just here for the booze. And I remember I used a, oh, I didn't. Oh yeah, I did. This is a etoile, I believe, etoile white in here. Yeah. That's one skirt rack. This is the third skirt rack. <laughs> Clearly, I have some lots of finishing opportunities uh, here. This is one of my favorite little pieces. Cats in the Rain. And on this piece, I changed the skin color uh and the yellow raincoat when i was a little girl i always wanted one of those nice yellow raincoats love this and the uh raindrops i used uh metallic and it's it actually became something of an experiment opportunity for me you can see one is a couple of them might be a different color didn't like the color on the fabric and that's when i went with metallic uh, a silver uh, metallic but some of them are one strand some of them are two and several of them are um, ten stitch because no raindrop is the same no they're all different this is Kathy Barrick uh, this was a personal piece that I did in remembrance of Tilly uh, and this is called um, time enough and I believe this is stitched on Weeks Dye Works Carrot. And I used the call for uh, colors, DMC, I believe. I think it's Carrot. Maybe it was call for Carrot and I found something close to it. I probably misspoke. I'm working on the kitchen, uh, French kitchen series by Hands On Design. This is Fraise et Mint. Pop 
pomme, pomme et sauge. And I'm working on one now. I don't remember. I have a whip. Oh, yes. This was one of my favorites. Shakespeare's Peddler. Cups and Saucers. This is stitched in a variety of cottage garden threads. I loved working on this. Uh, it was a great opportunity to use the uh, cottage garden threads that I have in my collection. I added the charms there in lieu of um, stitching um, whatever words were on it. And you'll see why when we move around a little bit. Um, I have another one of these done. Uh, keys and locks or locks and keys. I didn't stitch the word keys, but I used key charms on it. And that's all framed and hanging. I have a couple more of these charts in my uh, PDF stash. And I'm planning to stitch those fairly soon so that I can have them all up on the wall. This is the last finish that is, I don't think I need this board for this that is hanging in the closet. This is um, uh, I'm not going to try. This is called um, Seeds of Freedom. You see it's a long one, and I will have this one framed. I like this one very much. Very, very much. And I apologize because the designer ran out of my head, and I, I don't want to butcher the name, so I'm just not going to try. So those are the finishes hanging in the closet on skirt hangers. <laughs> Uh, waiting for framing for me to finish series so that they can all be framed together. Thank you. So now I'm going to move on to my office, which I've kind of put other pieces in there for finishing. And you will recall recently I was looking for uh, tea towels, couldn't figure out where they were. And it turns out I have two bins of finished pieces. Many of these are older pieces for sure. See you in a few. We're now in my, what used to be my home office, which I have repurposed to be a kind of finishing center. It's where I bring pieces for finishing. I store all of my backing fabrics and other uh, materials. This is primarily a dragonfly collection wall. Although I do have my Tempting Tangles, Scissors and Dragons, I believe it was called. On the other side of this picture here, kind of an ocean, and I will slowly move mm -hmm. in this direction. You can see some of my awards and recognition things there. Um, This was a piece that was actually uh, a um, commemorative sampler, Jean Farish, for one of the cross-stitch re retreats. And uh, I didn't do the bottom words because they were very specific to the retreat, um, but I have finished it and it's framed and hanging on this wall. So this wall, I will pan back a little bit kind of looks like that with stitching uh, that picture was a painting that hung in my family's living room when I grew up belonged to my father this is an antique desk that I've been carrying around since the early 70s and on it I keep some figurines 
Uh, I also, in the cubby here, is where I store all of my finishing materials. You can see that there's bags of walnut shells, um, all kinds of fillings. You can see my adhesives cubby. That thing is full of different types of adhesives. Packing supplies for when we do, or mailing supplies when we do Sunshine Stitchers giveaways. Uh, beads, I keep beads and buttons in here and assorted sort, other kind of supplies. Uh, here is Miss Debbie exploring everything, uh, probably looking for a way to knock everything onto the floor. Okay, I'm gonna, we're gonna make this take four. First, I filmed it, somehow deleted the clip, so I decided to refilm. Okay, that's good. I'm, I'm proud of that decision. That was a good one. Then, no. Then I started and realized I never turned on the video to record. So I should be pretty good at this, at this juncture in sharing these pieces. This is the segment where I wanted to show you all of the pieces that I have in the bins that I keep in my finishing space, which was my home office. It's being filmed kind of out of order to, to what I alluded to earlier. But again, like I said, I somehow deleted the clip. So here we go again. Many of these are old pieces. I don't know when I stitched them, uh, nor do I know designers. This is on, um, this is not, yeah, I think this is an Ada. I love this, this uh, yarn basket. Very pretty. I think that was one of the first sewing, stitching, needlework, themed pieces that I ever did. Snow globe. I think I can make that into a pillow and, and use it as a Christmas present. This one is my very, one of my very, very, very first stitched pieces. Notice the missing stitches, the awkward back stitching, uh, the top stitches are going in every possible direction. So are some of the back stitches. This is before I took my first um, class in cross stitch, which I took at the Spirit of Cross Stitch in 1993. 1993. Uh, it was in upstate New York. I think it was the last time it was there. And they had a class it was at, very appropriately named uh, 101, Everything You Always Wanted to Know About Cross Stitch. Up until that time, I was totally self-taught. And I look at this now, and um, I will have to say my stitching has come a very long way. Yes, I've got stitches going this way that way uh yeah lord knows everything you can imagine is going on there but that was my probably my very first piece that i ever picked up this is the contrast this to this unfinished completely unfinished piece which was a class that i took with Cindy Valentine, I, I, um, a cruise, a stitching cruise called Stitching on the High Seas. And um, it was one of her last classes before she retired. Uh, that I remember. We finished the stitching early in advance and the class was on the finishing. Uh, as you can see, we didn't get much of the finishing done, but all this was stitched in advance. 
So I look at the, the two pieces and I see just how far my stitching has progressed over time. Uh, that will be a needle book. This will be a biscornu. I really wanted to learn about how to put together a biscornu, so the stitching was done in advance. And this is, you know, she taught me, taught us how to start putting it together. And really all I have to do is finish it. And as you know, I've already finished other biscornu. And this will be a uh, scissor fob. Isn't that pretty? That has some drawn, uh, some drawn thread as well as specialty stitches in it. There we go. So I, I really should, I've got beads and um, metallics, some silks in here to uh, finish this piece. And actually I should so I can get those into my inventory and maybe I can use them in other projects. I also have another class that I took. Uh, this one was with Janice Note, Noteworthy Needle. This was at Stitching Under the Oaks. And again, this is several years old, maybe about five or six years old now. Uh, there are different, this is the picture of what it will look like when all the pieces have been put together. It's called Beach, oh, it's called Park It Here. Beach Party Set. Uh, this chair you can be used as a, as a phone caddy. Isn't that cute? So here's the, the, the backing of the chair. This will be, um, this can be used to make uh, this, well, almost anything there. Uh, this is the top, sorry. This is the top to here. This will go here. Uh, this is the band that will go around that. These two pieces that look like surfboards will become a, uh, a scissor uh, caddy. You can stick scissors in. And this could be a scissor fob here. So again, this was again stitching under the oaks. Did I show you the chair? Here's the chair. Right here. See. It 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 I don't want to take it apart because I may not get it back together again, but I do need to finish these pieces. Janice, just so that you know, I did finish the stitching. All I have to do is finish all the pieces. I know the last time I saw you, you did ask me about that. You asked me if I'd ever finished it and I had to duck an embarrassment, but it's getting there. One day, I'm gonna surprise you. This was one of my early um, forays into Christmas ornaments. I thought it was too large actually to be an ornament. So I tried some different kind of finishing. Uh, also uh, adhesives. I have to say, adhesives. Uh, and I think what I want to do, at first I thought this could be it, you know, but I, now I think it, it it should be in a frame. I'm going to put this in a frame. But I kind of like it. I kind of, you know, him on the this fabric background is pretty cute. Here's another one I did it the same year. Also came out to be too big. Uh, yeah, my adhesive, I've, I've gotten better at it um frame a uh, little bit different fabric um, i'm gonna put him in a little frame too this one you've seen recently this is the letter s from flower signs by rosewood manor i like that i like it a lot Another oldie, I believe this is 
stitched probably with wool or pearl cotton. Definitely a potential pillow. These are all sitting in bins in my uh, home office slash finishing area space. I love this. Uh, I like the side eye on the purple pumpkin. There's a purple bat up there. The cat, the green eyes. I mentioned towels recently. Here's an early towel. Really, I mean, there's no finishing here. It's done. I guess I just don't know what to do with it. So it sits in the box. I guess I'm afraid to put it out and use it. Here are the other two towels that I was looking for previously. These are uh, Stony Creek um, seasonal towels. I'm currently working on one autumn. This is summer and this is winter. I showed you these recently and I intend to finish these. I've got the autumn in a travel pack uh, when I go to doctor's appointments, take my car in for servicing, things where I will be sitting for a while, I grab that pack and that's my stitching. This is a, a piece, this is a, a carousel horse. Isn't that lovely? My favorite little snowman. Look at that cheery face, that smile. This is a piece that I purchased at a craft fair. I did not stitch this. I loved the handwork on this and the embroidery. Lavande, which is lavender. I loved the stitching on the skirt. Just, just lovely. And that really ought to be in a little frame or something somewhere. It's just so delicate. This reminds me of a stained glass, piece of stained glass. This is, I believe, Elizabeth Designs. The charms came with the chart, and, and the floss came with the chart. It says, pleasant words are a honeycomb sweet to the soul. It's got a little bee skip there. This uh, Timothy, the traveling steward, after the Pulse massacre, he worked with several people to and engaged the stitching community to stitch uh, squares that would be put together in quilts. The quilts were made and are on display in the uh, several of them in the Pulse exhibit in Orlando. I was in the process of stitching this one when they said they had enough um, squares. So I kept it and I didn't finish it. And I, partly I didn't finish it because I thought, well, the missing section sort of represents all the lives that were taken during that horrendous episode. I really should frame that, do something with that. This, I believe, is a, a JBW design, cats. I showed you earlier uh, my little cat that's very poorly placed in a round, a wooden round. This was also designed for a round. My idea is that I was going to swap them out, but what I should do is just buy another round. <laughs> Here's another oldie. 
I mean really oldie. This was purchased as a kit and it came with an a, acrylic board that you placed in this area and you used uh, erasable um, ink to like do your shopping list. You could hang it up in your kitchen. Yeah, you can tell this is, shall we say vintage? Here's another piece. I think I stitched this at the same time I, uh, as the carousel horse. And that's, this says um, January 03. Some of these pieces, especially these little ones like this, with this theme, I did in preparation for when my nieces had kids. Clearly, they never got them. I think the oldest of their kids is 12, 13, and the youngest is 5, 6. Several years ago, I did the laundry series um, by Hands On Design. My plan was to mount them on cabinet doors above my washing machine and dryer. That never happened. But they're all mounted. I don't know why. I guess I still could do it. They're all mounted. They just need placement. And wash dry fold. And those are the pieces in the bins that are in what used to be my home office, which is now kind of finishing mailing center for all things. So yay. <laughs> Hopefully this will work. If not, I will show you these in our next video because, like, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I've moved to the front of the house. I'm standing in the front door area. Uh, the piece at the top was actually stitched by one of my really good stitchy friends, Diane, and she gave that to me. Uh, these are two of the um, season series, that is Winter Peace and Spring Glory. I can't recall the designer. There will be quite a bit of movement here because I'm moving around um, a fairly good size space. But I'm going to go slowly so that I don't give anyone severe nausea. This is the uh, garden gate that was stitched a few years ago that sits on the door to the garage. If I turn around, sorry, I forgot. This is the original of I Belong to the Cross Stitch Nation that is the uh, opening to the Sunshine Stitchers videos. That was stitched as a challenge by the Cross Stitch Cupboard uh, several years ago. At the very top of my hutch, I have a, um, a piece that I did as supposed to be a Christmas ornament, but again, it was too big. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm moving, trying to move slowly. These are two embroidered pieces that I bought at uh, the big art show that's held in Miami in December. Uh, the artist is a South African artist. I thought they were um, just beautiful. I'm moving now towards the living room. You can see my liquor collection. That bar, that's actually a bar. Uh, that belonged to my father, so it's circa 19, uh, late 30s, 40s. This is a corner in the living room. Here are the other two pieces of the um, season pieces that is Summer Joy 
and Autumn Thanks. This piece on the wall, I'll move in closer. I stitched from a photo I took on a visit to Chester, South Carolina. Uh, this is my mother's family home. My grandparents raised 11 children in the house and uh, there was a funeral home on the first floor. It was one of two black funeral homes in the county. Moving to one of the corners, This piece hung in a couple of offices uh, <laughs> where I worked in Manhattan. This is uh, sort of, I, I, I thought this was reminiscent of how I felt about work at the time. This is how I felt life looked before computers. This was a, um, Oh my God, I just forgot. Lizzie Kate uh, mystery piece uh, that I did. It now uh, hangs here. I really like that piece. I love the colors in it. Now you get a little bitty view of my lanai. This piece hung in my office when I worked at the Treasury Department. Uh, this was also the first piece I ever did that had over one, and I'm really quite proud of it. It does hang in a place of honor. That's some artwork, street artwork from uh, South Africa. Moving now to the family room, that's my stitchy spot. It's where I was working earlier. I actually waited for the sun to change position so I could get better light. So let's see how we can hopefully get in on this. The top piece was supposed to be a luggage tag, but it was too big, so I framed it. The bottom piece, hold on. The bottom, sorry about that. The bottom piece, I'm not sure if this is Jeanette Douglas or Linda Driscoll. It is a, um, it's got some pulled thread in there, uh, some drawn thread, needles, art, delight my, delights my heart. Uh, use some over dyed threads. I think those were silks. Above the window here is where I put African Lady with Vase. Uh, that is a place of pride. Uh, when you come in the front door, it'll be one of the first pieces that you see. Christmas Land by Raise the Roof. The hook there is where Halloween Town will go when I get it framed. Above the TV, essentially hiding a cable that I had the bright idea to string from the roof, or from the attic, is uh, the key the crow brought. This is a piece you just saw in our recent video, vintage baby things. I waited a lot of years to get that framed in that oval frame. Uh, here is, um, so ABC de la Brodeurs is just hanging on the wall. I have not finished it trying to decide still how to finish it. It's just on a hook with a hanger, but I decided that I wanted to see it. I'm gonna continue to shift around here, hopefully not falling over anything. Above and next to 
ABC de la Brodeur is the two pieces that I originally stitched and had them hung on cabinet doors above my refrigerator, but they fell down because I used those strips. And now they hang side by side on the wall. Next to it is uh, March uh, from one of the calendar series. And I framed that one myself. Halloween by Nimue, classic Kiwi Bach. This uh, chart I bought in Auckland, New Zealand. Sorry, let me see if I can steady this a little bit more. I bought in Auckland, New Zealand when I took a cruise back in 2016 and uh, left from Auckland, New Zealand, came up through Australia, Indonesia, um, Komodo Island, Komoda Island, Bali, Kuala Lumpur, and into Singapore. Dear Santa by Lizzie Kate. Oh, and I bought that chart at a cross stitch store in Auckland that was very close to my uh, hotel. And I was really looking for that cross stitch store because my stitching scissors were confiscated when I changed planes in Sydney. Was not a happy camper. Dear Santa, I've been good all year. Another Lizzie Kate. Uh, all is well. This is uh, Flowers DMC. It uses the Coloris threads and it uses all of the Coloris threads. This is a DMC chart. Locks and keys. I talked about this earlier uh, to go along with the cups and saucers. I misspoke or uh, cups and spoons. Um, I will be using spoons on that piece. And I have several other of those in the series that I will be doing. This is spoiled rotten cats live here. Nice little fun piece. You can tell that I framed that myself. And then above Locks and keys are two old pieces that I did long, long time ago. Long, long time ago. In this little corner is ABCs of Needlework. I believe that's Jardin Privé. But again, don't quote me on that. And then below it is uh, By the Bay. And I believe that does it for the needlework uh, in the front of the house. So um, next part will be the, a kind of a regular video where I'll show my whips from the week and um, talk about stitchy stuff. Bye for now. I hope you've enjoyed my tour, if you will of my finished and fully finished pieces. I must say this has been a week of reflection. As I've walked through and pulled pieces out of the bins, uh, put pieces on the wall that weren't there at the beginning of the week, uh, I, I've had the opportunity to remember the times and the places where I was, the people in my life when I was stitching uh, these pieces, the joy I experienced as I was stitching them, and fully in, embrace the fact that I am truly a process stitcher. If you've watched our videos for any length of time, you know I take my time I have a lot of whips. There are more than probably 75 whips uh, going on right now. I usually have a daily rotation, which I have not been doing the last couple of months, and I miss it. I really do miss it tremendously. But I, I, the joy of the stitching, of watching that design the, and, in, and the creativity of the designer, uh, the skill of the designer. I enjoy that very much. 
I also remember the contentment that I experience as I'm stitching. So this was really quite the week for me, and I hope that um, you um, indulge me, really and truly, uh, as, as I've shown you those pieces. I realize that there are portions, particularly of the last segment, that got really shaky. I was holding uh, my uh, Surface computer, and I realized that at this age, um, things, I don't, I guess I'm more shaky than I thought I was. So I hope that uh, it wasn't too much, and but you were able to still uh, uh, look at and see the pieces that I was attempting to show you. So this really is a video that says Shelia actually does finish and fully finish her stitching. <laughs> Finally, there's some proof. I wanna thank you all for your comments in the past week. Uh, that the, your comments were wonderful. Thank you for appreciating Wash Day. A couple of people asked um, where they can get that chart. It, it actually is probably a needlepoint chart. There's only one place I know that has the needlepoint chart, charts, and that is Gillies, G-I-L-L-E-Y-S. It's a gallery in Louisiana. I will have it a link to it in the description. Uh, they do have some of the needlepoint charts, but it, it was stitched as if it was, the directions are for cross stitch. Um, but, but like for instance, I am not stitching the background. I found a fabric color that simulated the background color, and I'm going with that for my piece. Uh, I, I'm not a fully finished, a, a full, full thing person. Lots of conversation about light my fire. Uh, yeah, the story about that piece, it was hysterical last year at StitchCon to see that chart continuously pop up uh, at the table and in things. And, and since I was sitting at the table, I knew exactly what was going on. So it was a particularly uh, amusing, uh, event <laughs> that occurred during StitchCon. And I'm sure that this weekend uh, there will be a lot of focus and attention on it as well. So what did I do actually this week in the world of, of stitching? Oh, I forgot. In my, my little tour of um, my wall in that uh, family room space, I forgot to show you my boyfriends. I mean, like, how could I forget my boyfriends? Here is mittens. These uh, charts are from all through the night. This is Henry, Harry, and Jack. They, uh, and I know uh, this is Jack because he's doing jumping jacks. Um, these sit on a table uh, together, which is kind of why I missed them because I was focusing on the wall. So I realized that as I was playing the video back to see if I needed to redo it because of the shakiness, and I did do a couple of takes on it, so what you see was my best effort, uh, that I had left them out in the final uh, duration, so yeah. I did have a start this week. This is a start that I was, I've was i been looking forward to for a month uh, since I ran into Timothy, the stitching steward, on my flight from Miami to Providenciales and uh, Kirks and uh, take, uh, Turks and Caicos uh, Islands uh, last month. He, we were so shocked to see each other. I mean, it was just an amazing moment. He presented me his first production of his first uh, design that he is selling. This is Timothy's Pride 2022. And if any of you who have been following him on Facebook know that he self-designs his pieces. He stitches on his flights. He stitches in airports. Uh, and this is just, I was so 
pleased that he gave this to me. I decided to start this on June 16th because it commemorated the date uh, one month from when we, we saw each other on the plane. So this is Timothy's Pride 2022 Stitching Steward. I am stitching this on the, uh, hold on, on the 14 count Ada, and I'm using all the call for uh, DMC, which is right here. Beautiful. This will be gorgeous. Uh, this represents the uh, stitching I did yesterday. I know it may not look like much, but there's there are quite a few stitches in there. Yeah. Love it. Love it. I can't wait. It, it will be so colorful. Oh my God. I'm so excited. And thank you again, Timothy, for gifting me uh, that chart. I am I'm enjoying stitching it. So onto my whips. I worked on a uh, Wash Day, which is a reproduction of a painting by Clementine Hunter. This chart, as I just mentioned, is, is probably a needlepoint chart. Uh, and their Gillies Gallery in Louisiana does have some copies of this. Excuse me. <clears throat> Woo. Yeah. I um, am stitching this on 36 count taupe. I'm using one strand over two threads and I'm using the call for DMC. This week, I focused on the sky because I want to roll roll down to, to start really focusing on this area uh, down below. So I filled in the sky. I know it's not exciting and it's not interesting, but I got to tell you, that sky is, it's a lot of sky. <laughs> but it's fun and it's interesting because there are, there is a variety of color uh, in, in the sky. Again, let me show you. This is what I'm working on, that sky. Yeah. So that's Wash Day, Clementine Hunter. I also, this is one of the pieces that I thoroughly enjoy working on. I'm doing this with um, Derek, uh, Married with Stitches. I know that they are at StitchCon Weekend B. Uh, so hi, and I know they're enjoying themselves. I don't know if Derek, we said this last week, but I don't know if Derek remembers that we're stitching this. He may have already finished it, um, but I know they've been so busy. So I'm just assuming that he has not had a chance to finish it yet. But this is Cat Lovers. I always seem to say that it's Love Cats, but it's Cat Lovers uh, by Jardin Privé. I am stitching this on 32 count to bloom. That's a picture of this plus. And I'm using the call for DMC. And I am making tremendous progress on this. Look at that. I mean, I think I'm very happy with that. Uh, this week, I worked on uh, this uh, spacing in here. I finished this flower here, this one here. I think I did maybe this little motif, possibly that one, and I did the outline of that motif, which was fun. That was fun, making sure that I, the, the workflow on this was interesting because you really kind of stepped it down and then you came back and stepped it down and around again. And, You know, there you see it, it will be filled in. So there you see it there, a little bit, and there.
this week was kind of like a, a normal rotation week for me. So you can see the difference in the amount, the number of pieces that I work on uh, when I'm in my daily rotation or when I'm doing a period of when I'm giving pieces two or three days each, you, you don't get to see so much. Here are my boobies, stitched my boobies, brought my boobies out this week, and I have one, my kitten stitcher. Not, I don't know what one has to do with the other, but uh, Lindy Stitches Beach Dance. I loved, loved it from the moment that I saw it. Uh, if you've ever watched videos of blue-footed boobies, they are fun birds. Their mating dance is hysterical. This week, I finished his body here. No, I finished his wing. I did the stems. Uh, I think I did both the blue feet. Uh, yeah, stems, the flowers here. And I started bringing, now that I knew, I did not do this side of the border because I wanted to make sure I had brought this over far enough. Me being me, even though I counted it maybe three times to make sure I had the right number of stitches at the top and the bottom, I was afraid to close it up until I had actually stitched across on the inside just in case something didn't quite add up. Uh, that's a practice that I've adopted, um, yeah, because there are times I don't count too well and stuff happens. Uh, so um, yeah, so this was a dangling green thread and, I, and since it's the inside, I brought that up and I've also um, trailed the pin down so that I know that it actually does match up. So I was very proud. It's like, you know, when your corners match, that, that, that was that moment for me on that side. So this is being stitched on um, 32 count French lace. I'm using DMC and I had some conversions for Weeks Dye Works and Classic Color Works. Enjoying that one a lot, can't wait. I also have the other one, the red footed, red, I have the other boobies. I have two boobies. Here, I, this is my last whip of the week. I worked on the Mary, pardon me, the Mary Pets sampler. This is, um, Black Ribbon Studio is also working on this. She started, she's worked on some of her words, I think. Um, I started in the, in the corner here. Um, this is one, this is a reproduction, reproduction sampler by Queenstown Sampler Designs of, of, from the collection of the Oblate Sisters of Providence, Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, that was the first African-American Roman Catholic sisterhood. Mary Pets attended the school uh, sponsored by the Oblate Sisters of Providence which was located in Baltimore. Uh, you can see that um, it's, it, there's some over one here, and I believe there are some specialty stitches, but it's going to be, it's just magnificent. I asked um, Sassafras Stitches to kit it for me, and I decided to use the uh, Soie d'Alger silk. Here's the color palette. Again, here's the, the picture so you can see how much brighter and alive the final product will be. Very happy about that. And I'm so thankful to Sassy Jack Stitchery for kidding it for me. And here is what she looks like. You can see that the, the, yes, the beige of these um, flowers does kind of match the 
fabric, but it does so in the picture as well. I thought about making it a little darker, but I decided to stay, stay with it because, let me see, that's the way it is. I'm enjoying this a lot. It's a lot of fun. There you can see them. They're a little bit at an angle right there. I love the colors in it. Uh, this represents the bottom of the first page. This is a little longer than the first page because I kept going because I had thread in the needle. This is a lot of fun. Mary Pets Sampler. I'm stitching Mary Pets Wash Day. I have a couple of other black themed pieces uh, in honor of Juneteenth, which is this weekend. And uh, um, I'm also stitching Timothy's Pride also in uh, recognition of Pride Month for June. So those are my whips this week. So despite um, trying to film my finishes and fully finishes, I actually sat and got some stitching done. So I was really happy about that. I also have some haul. Um, got my checklist here. I was noodling around Shakespeare's Peddler online uh, store this week and saw where she had uh, Antique Cats and Crowns published. I purchased it as a PDF, so I don't have, I, you know, this is a uh, print of the PDF. Um, and this is the collection that she has. I have finished Locks and Keys here. I have finished, uh, Whoops. <laughs> Lots and keys, uh, teacups. I have scissors. Um, I believe I have baskets. I don't think I have birds, but I love this series. It's, it's imaginative. They are fun to stitch, as you can tell from the piece that I have on the wall. They're not very big, and mine was stitched on 32 count. So, yes, Cats and Crowns, Shakespeare's Peddler. We both like cats. What can I say? No Joe Robinette sighting today. I gave him a full breakfast. He helped me set up. And after he was satisfied that I had everything organized appropriately, that um, I kind of had it together, uh, he's gone off to uh, sleep off breakfast, which was actually my plan. Alrighty, talk about, so announcements. I've mentioned uh, this previously, but this month during June, these 20 Stitches is hosting the Stitch for Pride Challenge. We have a link in our description, uh, which I will keep in the description this week so you can see it. Every day, this is a fun challenge. Every day, they have created uh, information, education, a stitching challenge, and it's just an amazing um opportunity, I think, to celebrate Pride Month, um, stitch on something that also you find fun and exciting. So uh, the hashtag is hashtag Stitch for Pride 2022. So go on over um, the link, the information in the description includes the link to Dee's video where they talk about the challenge, provide you, provides you with uh, a lot of background and information, and it's thoroughly enjoyable. So please go ahead and do that. 
Also reminding everybody that this month's Garrod Designer Focus for May, for June, June is Plum Street Samplers. Plum Street Samplers. And that uh, July will be Erica Michaels. I'm looking forward to August, Mint Creek, because I want to finish, I uh, showed you earlier my photo booth finishes, and I mentioned that I have several others. I'm going to break those little boys out in August, and uh, looking forward to photo booth uh, for August. And then October is Cricket Collection, which is EJ's birthday month, and uh, Cricket Collection was EJ's designer choice. So I'm gonna I have one or two Cricut Collection uh, charts. So I'll be breaking those out. All righty, plans. So my plans for this week. Number one, EJ will be back. I believe this next week. I'm not sure if Gary will be with us because I know he's got a lot of things going on. He might be busy. Um, but to so this weekend I will be working on the game and I am filling in my approach to the game, which is a full coverage, did not work. I'm a color completer and it, it did not work. It's tough for me to stitch a square, a 10 by 10 square. I'm finding that to be actually quite a challenge. It's not the color changing. Well, it is the color changing in such a small spot. Um, I find it very confining and restricting. Um, so I'm trying to work through that uh, so that I can finish the game. Um, so I've got uh, some time set aside for that. I will pick up Rosina Dissery, which is one of my other uh, samplers that was done by a black woman. I'm not sure how old she was. She might have been a teenager. Martini. Um, I finished Margarita last year. Martini, these are glasses. Uh, that are depict the drinks. Uh, I will come back to Mary Pet so you'll see her again. I'll come back to Rosa Parks. I'm going to pick up Bushland Quaker by Mojo Stitches. I am so thrilled with that. Mojo Stitches, Bushland Quaker will round out the week. So I've got some great stitching coming up. I hope you do too. I hope you've enjoyed this video the shaking while I was walking around with the computer hopefully wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, um, it's tough, it's hard, but hopefully you were able to enjoy some of those finishes on the wall. Uh, and thank you so much for spending your time this week with me, uh, even though Gary and EJ are not here. Uh, thank you from the Sunshine Stitchers and we look forward to Hopefully you seeing us, we sort of see you next week. And please don't forget those comments, love the comments. So just in case, don't forget, the sun is always shining when you're stitching. Bye.